Mark and Doss friend, and we were created for three reasons. Um, one is that people would choose dogs that weren't appropriate for their lifestyle and then bring them home and have problems. Another was that, well, was, still is, that people will get a dog and then they don't know what to do and they don't know where to go to find out. And the third is that when I was volunteering at a shelter and at a rescue, I kept seeing dogs coming back for problems that either could have still been prevented, you know, could have been prevented or could still be remedied. So that was how your dog's friend was formed. That was the idea behind it. We have these free workshops. We have positive training classes. Uh, we give advice by email. If you're not on our mailing list for our newsletter, get on it. You're not automatically on just because you sign up for something. Um, it always includes behavior and training articles, and I pick them out so I know they're good. Um, they're written by people all over the world who have given us permission to use them. And if you look at our website, you can get a lot of information there, including um, under behavior issues. There are handouts to deal with all sorts of behavior problems that you may be having. Okay? Um, Jennifer Pennington, are you ready? Is, okay, she is the trainer and owner of Lead With Fun in Fairfax. She does private training and she also does classes. Um, and as I told you, this is going to be a unique experience for us. Um, and I think it's pretty cool having the dogs to practice with. Okay, so don't leave after the PowerPoint. There's a lot more to come. Okay? Um, anything back there, you can take, uh, well, not anything, the handouts and the books. <laughs> you can take for free. The other things we hope you'll look at and buy because they help cover our expenses. And we have a donations jar back there. Uh, don't forget, we are a nonprofit, so. All right, I'm going to start this. We have something pretty to look at. There we go. Oh, that's not it. It's pretty. It is very pretty. I did. What is that? Yosemite. That's all right. We'll we'll play it. Watch this. Oh, there we go. Well, like she said, my name is Jennifer. Um, I am the owner and the trainer of Lead With Fun. Um, there's a little extra letters up there if anybody cares about letters after my name. Um, CPDDKA, a lot of you are probably familiar with that. Um, that is Certified Professional Dog Trainer Knowledge Assessed, and then the other one is Certified Dog Behavior Consultant. If anybody calls themselves a behaviorist, they should have a master's degree or a PhD and extra certification. So ask them because if they say no, you might want to run. So that's just, I am not a behaviorist. But I am a search and rescue dog handler. All of my dogs are trained completely positive. They, I don't use any equipment or anything like that or um, punitive anything. Um, and yes, you can get a dog who runs off leash all day over six hours, does whatever it is you can need them to do without using the you know old school methods. So that's really, really cool. And that's actually what the name of my company is from. And how do you get a dog to do something? You reward them. You reward them. You gotta be fun, right? And if I want my dog to ignore all the poop and squirrels and deer and all that stuff, I have to be way more fun than all that stuff to get them to do what they want. So that's really good friend comes from. Well, today, you probably think, ignorant safety, that doesn't sound like fun. Trust me, it actually is. It's really fun. Um, this presentation is often given to uh, canine, uh, or not canine, to police officers because there was an unfortunate series of events that made the news where um, dogs had unfortunately gotten shot by police officers and they found out later on that that dog was not actually attacking them um, the police officer was just in a very scary situation and didn't know how to defend himself or read dog body language. So now they have this, these wonderful programs all over the place that um, it's canine 
ass uh, assessment and response training, and that's what CARP stands for. So that is a little bit what we're going to learn today, but it's going to be more for us, because I don't think there's any police officers in the audience. No? Yeah, we're out there, we're walking our dogs. Anybody jog, ride their bike, walk their dog? Go outside ever? Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have a job where you have to go in people's houses? That, yeah. Yeah, do you ever go in people's houses alone? Can be, it can, yeah. It's pretty scary, you know, half the time you go in there and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this dog is loose, it's charging at me. Anybody here a dog trainer? You know, I'm a dog trainer, you know what a lot of people do? I send them emails beforehand, please crank the dog, put it behind a closed door, lock the door, put a bar across it, you know, I have all of these. And all of a sudden I show up at a house and the dog is loose. And I think, wait a minute, this dog has a bite history. Well, you're the dog trainer, I wanted to see what you could do. I always leave my magic wand at home, I keep losing it. So this is something that can always happen to us. And I think a lot of us, we don't even know what our dogs do do. Um, half the time when somebody visits. And we're in the Northern Virginia, D.C., Maryland area. We tend not to have as many visitors as a lot of people are do in other parts of the world. And you know, it might be the very first time that an dog sees a stranger come into our house. So, you know, what do you do if you're going to your neighbor's house to help them, or you know, something like that? So this will help. I like outlines. So there's our outline for today. And what we're actually going to do is, first of all, how bad is it? And am I going out there and there's all these dogs out there that are trying to get me? Or am I going out there and it's maybe not that bad? We'll find out the, the answer to that. And also prevention. When we're training dogs, be proactive, not reactive, right? We want to show the dog what we want them to do before they make a mistake. Well, it actually goes with our safety as well. Same exact thing. So we're going to see exactly what do we do when we see that there might be a dog around, and then what do we do when it all goes wrong. So there's lots of dogs out there. There are almost half of U.S. homes have dogs. Wow, that's a lot of dogs. And a lot of people, you know, they have multiple dogs. A lot of folks, it might be their very first dog as an adult. So, you know, they might have had dogs when they were kids, but they really aren't aware of canine body language and all of that stuff. So, there's a lot of different stuff. And something really big has actually changed out there. In the law, did you know that your dog is property? They're no different than your car or something in your house? That's legal. But do any of you in here consider your dog property, like a thing? Yeah. Now, if I had asked that maybe 30 years ago, those numbers would be different. I think a, a lot of us probably think that our dogs are part of our family. So my dogs all sleep on my bed. Not in any room for us. That's one of my dogs. We're in the hammock. That's wrong. Um, and as you can tell, he's a pretty happy dog. Hammock's the favorite thing in the world. So what could you, uh, when could you possibly encounter a dog? Why are you even here? Well, you guys go outside, right? You go to parks, people's dogs accidentally get out of the gate, um, somebody opens up the door and the dog dashes out, so there's a lot of dogs running loose out there and people didn't intend to have that happen. It just happened. Um, driving around in cars. You take your dog somewhere, dog class, the dog's going to be in your car with you. You're out. You're about. And also those of us that go to other people's houses, well, that's where dogs live. So they could be anywhere. Oh, and in businesses. Anybody ever go into a business and all of a sudden, whoa, I didn't expect a dog here. This isn't a pet store. Yeah, that happens all the time, too. The thing is, is all dogs bite. Now, um, part of my bio, you guys will probably really like this, is I did train crocodiles. I've trained ostriches. I've trained lizards. I've trained birds. What I did for 20 years and what I wanted to be was a herpetologist that's studying reptiles and amphibians. And I always would have kids ask me, what does it like? And I said, well, does it have teeth? And then I got up a snapping turtle. <laughs> right? <laughs> Anything with teeth can bite, right? I mean, if, if I'm holding a dog and he's in a lot of pain and he was in an accident, 
is he going to turn and bite me? Yeah, if I have a broken leg and you move it, move it I'm probably going to punch you right in the face, right? <laughs> so all dogs can bite. They're, they're sweet animals, but yeah, it can happen. But most dogs never bite seriously. And what they mean by 7% as serious, those are anything more than a band-aid. A lot of people will go to the emergency room and the dog didn't even break skin. But because it was a child and it was a big pointy ear, ear dog or a blocky headed dog, they will still go to the ER and say, you know, a pit bull or a mastiff or German Shepherd bit my kid and the doctor sends him home. So, uh, so that actually I think is staggering statistics. Over 80 million dogs are out there in the United States in our homes, and very few of them actually do damage. So that's pretty amazing. But of course, you never say never. There's always the worst day. Um, my worst day is getting up in the morning and having a cold shower. I just watched Groundhog's Day. I don't know if you've seen that <laughs> yet. I think they said in that movie that um, Chip, or not Chip, um, Phil, guy in the movie, he was there for 34 years being the same day. Can you imagine 34 years in a cold shower? That definitely is my version of not being in a nice place. So, um, coffee, I have no coffee or my coffee maker is broken, that's not good. I step on a broken dog bone, bare feet, I'm already having a bad day. I get in my car, I'm running late, and all of a sudden somebody cuts me off. Okay. Now, now we've had it, right? Well, what happens now? Well, what happens now is I go to a coffee shop because if I don't go to a coffee shop, no, none of you all out there will live. You gotta have my coffee. And all of a sudden, somebody gets in line right in front of me, is talking on the cell phone and being very rude. And most of the time, I just mutter under my breath. But now that day, that day, I have had enough. And I might say something to that person. And then that person is snappy with me. I might escalate that. I might just shove in front of her, right? So always think, your dog isn't always having the exact same day every day. They can have a really bad day. Back, nail trim, you know, trash truck came that day. <laughs> I love this graphic. This is from uh, Jean Donaldson's book, Culture Clash. Fabulous book if you've never read it. And all of these little things that are on this list is from a dog that she was assessing. Um, she was there because the dog had bitten a child, and she went over to assess this dog, and the owner said, oh yeah, my dog's fine with kids. I don't understand why it happened. Well, you see the little green bar there? The owner was unable to read the dog's body language well enough to actually see there's a difference between tolerance of children and loving children, right? And if you really want to get my goat going, show me all the pictures on the internet of cute pictures of kids and dogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you'll have me lose it there. And a lot of those people think the dog is having a great time, right? So this owner had no idea. The dog was just a little bit nervous, but would just move away from the children. It was fine with them. Wasn't thrilled about men with ears and hat. Hated nail trims. And would even you know, growl at that point and stop touching my foot. And I think that thunder. Well, they went over to this house. There was thunder the night before. The dog had its nails trimmed. There were lots of guests over at the house. And at the very end of the night, the dog was underneath an end table hiding. Child walked, uh, crawled by, reached in underneath the table, and the dog put the kid on the hand. Is that dog aggressive to children? <laughs> I'm not usually aggressive to people on the cell phone who kind of run me at Starbucks. And then once another five minutes, I have to wait for my, you know, mint mocha macchiato or whatever it is. I no, so there's always the unknown triggers. What does dog? What, what does a dog really rely on? How do they really love experiencing your world? What do they use? Yeah, their sense of smell. I mean, it is staggering what they can smell. It's absolutely incredible. And so they could be blind. They could be deaf. But my goodness, they're certainly not impaired. They are going through life just, oh yeah. You ever have a dog, you take them outside and they're completely daydreaming, just spacing out, right? <laughs> they, I mean, you can be throwing stuff over their head, or, you know, just anything, anywhere, and they won't see it. 
Well, that's what we're talking about, unknown triggers. What if they were startled from, you know, somebody stepped on their tail once, or somebody fell next to the dog, or the dog um, got a really painful procedure in a veterinary clinic, and you just happen to use the same soap that that veterinary clinic uses, or perfume, or what about your own personal genetics? How about how you walk, how you talk? There are unknown triggers out there. There's nothing um, that we can know what is going through that dog's head. So, you know, you could be perfectly fine with the dog one moment, and then all of a sudden the dog says, well, wait a minute. I don't like really what's going on here. So there's always those unknown triggers. And of course, all dogs can bite. So the cool thing is, is most bites are preventable. And that's all being proactive, not reactive. And most bites aren't serious. And we kind of covered that. Um, the really nice thing is that very, very few people are actually killed by dogs. I mean, these are animals who have jaws that are capable of, you know, eating meat, right? And you, you watch your dogs chew their bones. And um, sorry, I'm going to turn this off. It's probably driving you all nuts here. You know, they're chewing their bones, and you're watching them get it right in the back of their mouth and cracking. They've got pretty strong jaws, right? Oh, there we go. It's amazing how much they can tolerate from us. I think dogs are far more tolerant of our hijinks than we are of each other's. So it's pretty cool to say that about dogs. They're amazing. There's something that you have to think about when you do go out, and that is these two categories. Um, I can't, yeah, Karen Delise, she's from the National Canine Research Council. They do a lot of research about dog, dog bites, um, fighting dogs, um, dog genetics, all of this interesting stuff. The difference between a resident dog and a family dog, a family dog is a dog that is usually with the family. They don't necessarily have to be hanging out in the home. I grew up in New Mexico and out there, you know where most of the dogs were? They weren't inside dogs, they were outside dogs all the time. You would only bring them in if it were really cold outside. Not my dogs, they lived in the house, but I was weird. Those are still family dogs. Resident dogs are dogs where people have them chained out back, they usually don't feed them, there's zero socialization. Those are dogs that are just running around um, through the neighborhood, and the really cool thing is with that picture there, that picture on the top is the same dog as the picture on the bottom. Isn't that amazing? It's a totally different looking dog. Um, and it, it just changes them that much. Most of those serious dog bites that you saw were actually from resident dogs. So, you know, you go to Baltimore to a bad neighborhood, those dogs are there for security. Those are resident dogs that we're talking about. So, that's just kind of an distinction. And just remember, a, a resident dog can become a family dog and vice versa, just depending on if it's changed. Did it just work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that was, that was really cool. It was like, I didn't do that at all. There is one thing that you always think about, and this is something that police officers are always thinking about, it's called the continuum of force. So what does that mean? Well, the very first thing everybody does, even James Bond does this, is they first they freeze, because they have to quickly assess the situation. Now, if you've had training, then you're gonna go to your training, but you have no training, what happens next? Fight, flight, or freeze, right? Now for a dog, the very first thing is, whoop, let me assess the situation. And then usually they go, this person or thing deserves a warning. Usually they'll growl, then maybe they'll snarl, snap, then bite. Dogs that don't go through that whole sequence, either they think that their life is in immediate danger and it's just defense mode, and they think they're gonna die and it's life or death, or all of the things beforehand were not listened to, and they said, you know what, it doesn't do any good. I'm just not going to show anybody any of these bad behavior, you know, all of these warning behaviors because either I was punished or those silly humans just don't pay attention. And they continue doing what I don't like when I tell them not to. Which of those two dogs would you like, or which of those dogs would you like to pet? And you can just yell it out. First one, the Jack Russell. Jack Russell, yeah. Any of the others? The Border Collie. The Border Collie. 
put over the mud in the top right <laughs> corner. The guy, that, that guy? Yeah. Okay, so we've got this guy, this guy, and this guy you want to pet. Any others? Bottom left. Bottom left. How come you guys didn't choose this guy? He's so cute. He's looking right at you. His ears are forward. There's something about him, isn't it? There's just something. And then there's that guy. He's, they're no, neither one of them are snarling, right? What's going on? Their eyes. Their eyes. Yeah, there's all these things. And you guys are really good at this because you're able to actually verbalize what it is that you see. So some of you might have actually gone to your dog's friend at some point. <laughs> yeah. But there, there is absolutely no perfect translation. Um, I seem to be very extroverted, don't I? So, you know, a lot of people on stage are not. They're actually very introverted. I go home, I read a book, I'm exhausted after my day. I love my job. I am not going to act the same way as everybody else, right? Um, my favorite example is this. Does everybody know who Woody Allen is? Yeah. Woody Allen, he's got the glasses. He's always like this, right? This is how he stands in all of his pictures is his movie premieres. He's got his hands in his pockets. And he's just kind of hunched over a little bit. He's kind of crunched up. What about Howard Stern? How does Howard Stern stand? A lot of times he's like this. Which of the two seem to be more confident? Howard Stern. Howard Stern. Woody Allen makes lots of money and lots of really great movies. Howard Stern is radio show host. But they're both confident in their own environment, right? What if you ever saw Howard Stern do this? What would you do? I'd be looking for the T-Rex. <laughs> I would be frightened, right? What if you saw Woody Allen go like this? You'd think, oh, what's going on, you know? <laughs> so always think, you know, not everybody has the same base level. So not every dog has the same base level. And not every person or dog looks the same. So, you know, trust your gut. There's a, one book, my favorite, called Gavin De Becker, The Gift of Fear. If you haven't read it, especially if you all have any of those jobs where you have to go into people's houses, read The Gift of Fear. It's incredible. So why should we communicate with dogs? I mean, we're just out there. We're going for a run. A dog is rushing at us. We should just take care of the situation, right? Well, no. A lot of you probably have dogs. Does anybody in here not have a dog? Really? <laughs> Wow, cool. Passed away. Oh, so you had dogs. Yes. Okay. I, I don't have that wasn't that how you asked the question. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Well, dogs communicate with one another for the same reason we do, right? I mean, we don't protect our puppies. We have children. But, you know, by goodness, mom or dad is going to run in front of their children any time of the week and probably be very aggressive. Um, dogs will do the same thing. Their resources in their home. Dogs are very much the same way. But here's the interesting thing. Dogs give warning signs and actually will get into scuffles with one another without actually making contact with their mouths or biting down to avoid aggression, to avoid having to hurt one another. Most of what they do, and it's very rare that dogs will intentionally hurt one another, unless there's something really wrong going on. And usually that's one of the dogs that's communicating. And then you compare uh, people. And this is something that we're a lot different than dogs are when we're reading and, and all of that. So we talk a lot. We seem to think that whatever's coming out of the big hole in the bottom of our head is really important to us. And dogs, not so much. You know, my dog doesn't come in and go to another dog and go, rrr, 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 rrr. it's usually body communication. So we're going to look at that. Me. There we go. So the first thing we're going to look at is eyes. Um, this is not an actual scientific term, hard eye, but we're just going to use that. And you can see this guy is, you know, Big, huge eyes, really round. If you see the whites of the dog's eyes, he could have just been looking at something off to the side of his head, right? But that dog clearly, he, he's got something going on he's not comfortable with there. 
and we call that whale eye or staring directly at something. And then, of course, I have our essential golden retriever. We do a lot of squinting and very almond shape. They do a lot of blinking. And then there's this. If a dog is avoiding giving you eye contact and just keeps looking away, that's a dog that is trying to get you to go away. He doesn't want you to get any closer to him. So it's something that you look at and glancing and looking away, glancing and looking away. Why does he keep glancing at you? He's watching. <laughs> he tabs on you. He doesn't trust you, right? Um, this border collie here gets in a lot of trouble. I train a lot of staff at, at doggy daycares, and boy, these poor guys always get in so much trouble. Now, I mean, he's just probably looking at a frisbee about ready to be thrown, but they do that with another dog, too. Okay, okay, okay. And the other dogs, they, they beat him up all the time because they don't want to be stare at. <laughs> so what do you think this is, hard eye or soft eye? No. Oh, okay. So let's look at it. Are those eyes round or squinty? Round. They're round, okay. And what is the white part of the eye? You see that? You see a little bit of it, right? You shouldn't see any. You shouldn't really see the white part of the eye. And is he staring at something? Yeah, he actually is. His head isn't staring at it. That's what dogs do. They kind of point their nose in a different direction and they look back thing that they're worried about. That is a hard line. How about this guy? <laughs> Big, scary, Rottweiler, right? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely a soft guy. Yeah, and, and if you go back, you see the difference? Yeah, and if you have to, if you're really, really good at looking at the whole picture, you might want to just squint or cover the rest of the picture with your hands and just look at the eyes, you can really see it. What about this guy? Oh, yeah, hard eye. You guys are good at this. Would you run up to this dog? No. Yeah. <laughs> now remember, this is a moment in time, right? This is a photograph, and that dog could have just heard like a weird noise or something. Um, my husband says that that dog kind of has that look on his face, like you know, who flatulated in this room. So. <laughs> and then there's these. This is. The pupils. And they can either be dilated or constricted. So which do you think these are? They're constricted. Why would they be doing that? Well, they're focusing on something. It's usually like a predatory thing or ball, right? <laughs> They'll focus on something really quick, zero in. But you always have to keep in context here. That that cute little puppy on um, blue eyes, well they don't have blue eyes, the cute little puppy on the right. Is he out in the sunshine? He's looking up, or he's in a film studio, so it's really bright in there. Your eyes are going to um, constrict in bright light. What if the eyes are dilated out in the bright sun or in a bright room? They're dilated and really big, and you can you know, see a huge black area, and you can't see the irises at all. That shouldn't be happening in the sunshine, right? And this probably shouldn't be happening in a dark room, so that tells you something. But always think context. So, constricted or dilated? dilated? Dilated. And should they be? No, bright room. That dog was uh, getting his adoption photo at a shelter. And clearly he wasn't very thrilled about it. So, <laughs> did not like the cameraman, I think. What about the head? Well, I want you to try something. Imagine that you're a relaxed dog. So, you're just going to have, take a big deep breath and just. And you're just going to let your head just kind of sit from here, sit normally, naturally. Okay? You're just going to sit there. Okay, now become confident. Oh, yeah, see, a lot of people just kind of raise their head up, get a little bit forward. How about this? Relaxed. Alert. Become fearful. How about predatory? Okay, relax. Yeah. <laughs> You're moving your heads, every single one of you, and some of you are moving your heads a lot, and some of you it's just a little bit, but I can see it all happen, and you, you'll see that too. Can you talk to the dogs and see what the, the dog does? My favorite thing is, hey puppy, hey puppy, puppy. See if the head changes, see what they do. 
And then there's tension, facial muscles. This guy's got a lot of tension in his face. And you can see it, oh, that is not the pointer, Jen. <laughs> there we go. See those? A lot of people say he has this worried brow. Well, if you were to actually verbalize what does worried look like, look at that. He's got the you know, line right there, there's a line right there, you've got the forehead right there, and his mouth, right? He's like holding it shut, and what about this line right here? That's my favorite line. If you see that in a dog who um, doesn't normally have that line there, he is clenching his jaw. And if you clench your dog jaw, and put, put your hands up here, right on your temples, clench your jaw. You feel that move? Yeah. So that, that's um, the tightening of the muscles will cause that blind to pop out. So, and sometimes when they put their ears back, their forehead will get really shiny. We'll see that too. So dog, dog on the left, if I say, hey puppy, that's, if a dog ever does that, he's probably not coming after you, unless you're covered in bacon. He might look <laughs> yeah. What about the dog on the right? You want to go say hi to it? But it's a chocolate lab. They're all friendly, right? They're great with kids. Go say hi. You'd be surprised how many people would run up to that dog or let their children <laughs> run up to that dog. So it's always, always something that you should worry about. Now that his head, the lab's head, let's forget about the facial muscles. Is his head high or low? Low. Yeah. That's predatory, isn't it? That, when I see a dog ever do that, where they lower their head and they stare directly at me and they hold their breath and their mouth is closed, my blood runs full. I know there's a problem. So, and it, it could just be he's like, huh? <coughs> Which dog is confident? The one on the left. Yeah, the one on the left. That's actually a, the dad of the puppy on the right who's real rotation Ridgebacks. Yep. So, how about you see this dog? You want to run up to him? It's really hard to tell. You can't even tell his ears. You can't look at his facial muscles. He's got all that fur all over his face, right? Well, let's say his name. Let's say his name's Rusty. Hey, Rusty! You see that? <laughs> now, let's approach him. Oh. <laughs> right? So you see the difference there. Want to cook? <laughs> so you can see there's a big difference with that. How about these guys? Dog on the left? The look, he might be scared, maybe. He's relaxed. He is relaxed. I think the one thing that really throws people is ears back. Um, this is something that uh, greyhounds do, pitties do, um, minhits do, um, and I have Dutchies and Malinois. They like to fold their ears back, and it's kind of like, okay, pet me. And a lot of people go, ooh, his ears went back. Yeah, you're fine. It's all right. What about the dog on the right in the bed? <laughs> He's terrified. Yeah. He's terrified. Um, very, very worried. But don't think that he's aggressive, though. That dog probably is just exhausted, right? That dog who was at an adoption event and was just exhausted by the end of the day and had had enough. Yeah. Well, um, I had a German Shepherd and he used to put his ears back, but he was subservient. He was yes. getting his attention. Right. And that's exactly, um, so they actually changed, and I say they, scientists, because the word was so misused, and there's such a misunderstanding on the word dominant and submissive, and it's been so misused, they, this is rare for science to ever do this. They said, you know what, we're changing our word. So now they're called appeasement gestures, or affiliative gestures, which is kind of like you going up to somebody that you really respect, and you go, very nice to meet you. Oh my goodness, I am your biggest fan, as opposed to, hi, my name's Jen. You see the difference? So that's what your German Shepherd was doing. He's like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and a lot of people think, your dog's a wimp. You know, he's putting his head down, rolling on his back. No, he's just very friendly. <laughs> he likes to shake hands. What about these guys? You want to go up to any of them? Now, be fair. What if the dog on the left had his mouth open? And maybe looked a little bit more relaxed? A lot of dogs have wrinkles on their face just all the time. I know when I was at the other day, last Wednesday, I was at a, a doggy daycare training the staff, and I said, who can tell me which dog looks really stressful? And nobody pointed at this one dog that looked really kind of shut down and stressed out and wrinkles all over her face. Later on in the room, she was running around being goofball, and I was like, oh my goodness. 
her face was just scrunched up and wrinkly all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, I was wrong. Um, the dog on the right, that has a technical term. It's called really freak out puppy. <laughs> <laughs> what about this dog? Anybody own one of these dogs? There is no way I am going to be able to tell you how this dog is feeling <laughs> on its facial anyway. Um, and you know what? This poor dog has problems with other dogs too. And, and in doggy daycare, these guys have a really hard time. Pugs. Any sort of bulldogs, anything sharpays. Those poor guys, all the dogs think that they're they're doing this to them all the time. And and they're just getting misread. Love this picture. Sounds looks really scary, doesn't she? This is mama. And if you look down on the bottom there, that's a bone. There's a puppy over you know, over here, and she's teaching the puppy, when I have it, it's mine. When you have it, it's yours. Don't jump all over my head when another dog has a bone. But that's that's the good old snarl, you know, their lips pucker up. How about that snarl? Okay, that snarl means it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's, I like to call him Jethro. He's missing a, a tooth right there. <laughs> this is actually a police canine, and he is um, being held back on the leash and on a harness, and the bad guy is like, I've got what you want to buy. And so he's learning to bark. But if I ever see a dog do that, I'm going to leave. He's probably not going to go say hi. The one thing that you want to look at is the corner of his mouth. Can you see the back of his teeth? Can you see his molars on the top? If you can't see the molars on the top, that's a snarl. That, that dog is, you know, wanting to make you go away. So, so what about that one? See the difference? Tongue is kind of halfway over one tooth. You don't see very many teeth. Um, very relaxed body. My favorite picture in the whole world. <laughs> Little pity. That's what we call the day face. That dog is having the best day of his life. But what about the dog in the snow? You can see his teeth. Oh no! No, it's just he's running and his, 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 his lips just flap <laughs> up in the air. Um, my favorite is. Uh, if anybody's ever read the book The Scent of the Missing by uh, Susanna Charlson, it's absolutely hysterical. She goes and um, gets her next search dog puppy, and she has him in her lap on the airplane, and it's this adorable golden retriever puzzle. And he's upside down, and his lips are all back like this, and everybody can see his teeth, and passed out, and everybody went, ooh, it's this adorable puppy. He's completely passed out. But they saw his teeth. What about a closed mouth? Yeah. Yeah. See, you guys are good at this. All it is the difference is the mouth was open or the mouth was closed. Huge difference. Yeah. So, any of you, and I, I do have the handouts, which I will have to give you all. I just don't know where I get them. Um, front seat of my van. So, I'll get them later. Um, I will send somebody out for them. Um, you have all seen it, and they have this on your dog's friend website, and they pass it out almost all the time if anybody takes any of the classes. But the little drawings of the Boston Terrier Bogey by Lily Chin, fantastic. A lot of stress signals she has on there. We Anything. Have the here. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, and anything weird with the mouth that's kind of out of context, if the dog isn't tired, He's yawning, or he's yawning a lot. Lip licking, like unless they are just eating a treat, or you have a treat in front of their mouth, and they're going, "Oh, yummy, bacon strips," you know, then they shouldn't be licking their lips. Right. I see a lot of dogs at adoption events with tongues like that on cold days, and I know that dog hadn't been running around because they're inside of a you know pet store. So he shouldn't have a paddle tongue. That's a dog who's really, really stressed out. Now the black dog, that's my dog. Um, he was running around on playground. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> he was having the best day of his life. He was climbing and everything. It was a hot day. It was like 90 degrees outside. And I need to acclimate him to do his search work because we don't shut things down just because it's hot outside. The dog um, with the person holding him in the green shirt, it wasn't a hot day, and that was an adoption event. And the dog was just Oh, I'm done. So you see that. What about that one? Yawning. 
you have a normal yawn, and then that one is this exaggerated yawn. A lot of you will see that where your dog goes, <sighs> you know, it's huge yawn. That's not a tired dog. How about this guy? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Okay. I think you need to know context. Okay, let's say, hey puppy. Oh. Look at the difference. Yeah, sometimes you need to see, like you said, context. You, this is, these are photographs, and I love, I have a big, huge book with photographs in it, dog body language, you really gotta watch videos, you really gotta watch live dogs. Go to a dog park, stand on the outside of the fence and film it. Because what will happen is you'll see dogs interacting, and then you'll get the film of what happened afterwards, and you go, wow, there's a fight. Let me reverse that and see what the body language is. It's awesome. And it really helps. And I think Sue Sternberg on her website, she has a lot of videos and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, was paddle tongue, was that the same thing as spooning tongue? Yes. Yeah, paddle tongue, spatula tongue, spooning tongue. We all make up words for that. Yeah. And I can actually get you guys slides later. You guys can help me. Who was the woman you mentioned again? Mentioned a minute ago, Sue. Sue Sternberg. Sternberg. Yeah. She she lives. She takes her camera with her everywhere. She likes to film dogs at dog parks. So she might have some dog videos on her website. So who do you want to pet in these, this video? Mm -hmm. The one on the right. The one on the left. Top middle. Maybe the top middle. Maybe. Maybe. And then, this, this guy, I might look at like a second later just to see if he just maybe saw his owner or something and was like, oh, hey, you know. I'm not sure, but definitely these three, absolutely not. Your adrenaline is going to take a little while to kind of calm down after whatever it is that happened. And this guy, the only reason is, is he's holding his mouth shut but pretty hard. Look at those lines. And they look kind of worried. Um, now, it, it could change in a second, right? As soon as he realizes what's out there, it might relax. But I'm certainly not going to go up right at that moment. This is, oh, what is her name? It might be Amber. She is, and some of you might be following her on Facebook, she is probably the busiest therapy dog ever. She's done so many different things. Therapy dogs do really hard work. A lot of times I think they're in there for way longer than they should be. Not her. And she loves it. She's got treats on her paws. She's just one <laughs> How about this guy? I know cutie, right? Yeah, worry, definitely. And that's what I wrote down. So you guys said worry. You you approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? So it's moments of time. Yeah. How about this one? I love this. I have two clients whose dogs do this, and I sadly, I've, I've heard of some dogs that were given away or taken to the shelter because their dog did this to their kid. It's a submissive grin. Really not sure why they do it, but it's, it's always a happy thing. It's, it's like, yay! They usually do when you come home. Um, the client that I have, her dog does this. <laughs> Look at the dog's body, though. The dog's body is doing this. Just wiggle, 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 and there's these teeth right there. So it's really important to look at the whole dog and those ears. It's so cute, right? And we know about like the ears are up, tentacle, right? What calm and relaxed looks like in that particular dog. What about the Doberman? What about those little cropped ears? What does it look like that that Doberman is doing? Yeah, it doesn't look happy. It looks nasty. What if you have big floppy ears? Yeah. Can you imagine what it's like for other dogs? And they look at them and they go, oh my goodness, that dog's going to bite me. Yeah. So it's pretty trouble for, troublesome for them as well. And we talked about that one dog with his ears folded up. He's like, how about this dog? His ears are up and forward. If he had pointy ears like a German Shepherd, they'd be pointing forward. You can tell even with floppy dog ears. You just have to get a little bit of practice. Speaking of which, floppy dog ears, right? So what do you think? He's a word. Okay, you say, hey, puppy. Then you reach the pedal. See that? Isn't that interesting? It's just his ears. 
Very, very little else has changed. Even his mouth is exactly the same. It's so funny. Just, just the ears. This is the ears folded back. Are you happy? How about these guys? Their ears are back, but yeah, yeah. And they're down and back. The difference between those are up at normal level, those are down and back. Okay. Tails. My favorite thing in the world. Oh, but my dog's tail was wagging. Yeah, <laughs> that's not always right, right? So it's how the dog's tail is wagging. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So those are the two tails. We have that Rhodesian Ridgeback again. Very proud of you, Dad. There. He's, he's distracted by something on the other side of the fence. And then there's a Dalmatian that was at the shelter. And yeah, very first day in there, very scary. This is called tail flagging. What do you think is going to happen next? Nip. What? A nip. A nip. Who's going to bite whom? The black, the black dog. Yeah. The white dog is a puppy, being very, very rude. But if you look at his tail, he's extremely aroused. His tail's up and it is wagging. And I'll show you a bit of a video. It's wagging like this. This is called tail flagging. This dog doesn't like people coming into his home. And just loses it. We'll do it twice because I think it's like four second video. Uh oh. It's not one of those where let's see. <laughs> no. There is a movie, I swear. Let's see. Okay. I got to play on this, so I think I know what to do. Play on this map. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna change something here. We are going to, sorry, because you gotta see this, this is really important. Is we are going to get rid of all of this nonsense. Okay, you guys ready for the, don't you love computers? They just make our lives so much easier and lovely. Where's the play? Oh boy, I don't know what to do. Yeah, that, that just does this. It's the projector. <laughs> Poo! <laughs> we'll go back to it if we can figure it out. Um, I'm just not smart enough. Here it is. Oh, wait, it's late? No. Oh! <laughs> All right, cool. Maybe it's good morning, sir. Okay, so I'll play it again. Everybody cross your fingers. Ready your chosen dog, let's see if we get it to work. What's the base of his tail doing? It's straight, right? It's still, but the, the top of the tail is flagging. That is a very aroused dog, and if I were to reach towards them, it's not going to turn out very well, right? And my favorite is block, you know, don't look at the head, just look at the body. How is the dog's weight and air that's his leg slayed or underneath itself? Look at that. Do all dogs who roll over want you to rub their belly? No. Yeah, look at their face, see if they're scared. Because there's a big difference between You're looking at words, not dogs. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What about hackles up? Does anybody here like Metallica? <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to put you on the spot. What's your name? Nelson. Nelson. Okay, I want you to imagine that you're in your 20s. You, you spend $10 on that, that beer, 150 bucks on a ticket. You're super jazzed, right? Your favorite song comes on and somebody bumps into you and spills your beer all over yourself. What is most likely to happen? Not you specifically. 
I won't pick on you totally, Nelson, okay. but <laughs> you're probably like a late guy. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to have a little bit of a disagreement, right? What if you're at the Kennedy Center and they're doing an orchestral version of Metallica, <laughs> which has been done and it's actually really cool. Same exact $10 beer, but now you're in a $2,000 Italian suit. What happens? Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, I'm so sorry, let me get you a cleaning bill. Oh, let me exchange phone numbers. No, no, I was in your way. I am so sorry. Let me buy you another beer. Yeah, let me buy you another beer. Isn't that funny? The only difference between those two things is the adrenaline level. Now, the context causes the adrenaline level to be at where it's at. So if a other dog's playing with another dog and really excited, or maybe you're throwing them all for them, and they're like, and then all of a sudden something scary happens, that dog is more likely to do something than that dog that was just kind of walking around the house. I'm not talking about dogs that are passed out, though. That's completely different. Um, sudden dander. I've seen this where you're petting the dog, and all of a sudden you look down, and it's snowing. It's almost like from the Beth Breakfast Club where she, uh, oh, see, I called you. Now I know how old you are. <laughs> My favorite also is changes in breeding. We have a great video for that. There's a perfect dog breeding. I love that. It's super cute. They first do that. Now, are they facing one another? No. No. Dogs never, ever approach one another with a friendly greeting. It is always, they're always moving in circles and arcs. What makes that perfect? Ah. Well, the side, right? The ears are slightly back, right? Now, the mouth is closed, right? But it's not closed hard. And look at the relaxed body posture. The dog that is getting sniffed that's facing us, does that dog look like it's stiff or relaxed? Yeah, relaxed. If that dog stiffened up, yeah, that was a really good question. Yeah, because you're looking at it like, check the dog, head's low, and yeah, that's right, the body posture. And then that's what happens. That's what we call a doggy handshake. <laughs> what about this dog that's um, with the leash on it and next to the owner? Yeah, that dog actually bit somebody in that waiting room a little bit later. It was being surrendered for adoption and was very scared and was leaning towards its owner. What about the uh, the two dogs there? Which, which, which dog um, rules that relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Poodle's paw, yeah. <laughs> she's a tough poodle. She might have hair dye, but she's a tough poodle. I can't remember whose dog that is. I think that's Sarah Babcock's dog. Um, she runs um, some stuff down at the shelter in Richmond, the SDCA. And uh, yeah, that and they're leaning away from one another. That that pity's like I'm not sure. What about this? Yeah, <laughs> Dad went up to puppy, and it's like. Hey, is there a reason why a dog doesn't oh, run at you? Is there a reason why they do that? It depends on the situation. If she's always doing that, it could be um, like we call them affiliative gestures now as opposed to submissive. Um, so it could be that she's kind of like a Woody Allen sort of dog where it's like, oh, yay, really excited to meet you. Or she could be a little bit nervous. It just depends. I don't see it. So. But every time they get a treat, she could just be so excited. It really depends on the situation now. Which dog's more relaxed? Which dog takes up more room? <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to call political sides here, but I'd like you to go back. If uh, You probably look it on YouTube where um, uh, now President Trump was meeting with President Obama, and it was kind of like the change of the office. Go look at them. One of them felt much more comfortable than the other one. And it was really funny as Obama was sitting how he normally does, like this. He's been in office for eight years. He's like, yeah, I know all these people, you know. Trump was crunched up, leaning on his legs, and then he was steepling his fingers, which is a power move, but he was so crunched up, it just didn't look right. He was taking up less space. So it was really, really fun and interesting to watch that. And I can't blame the guy. He wasn't a politician. And poor guy's in front of all these, you know, all these people. So he's certainly in a weird situation there. And then a lot of things that they're doing with their paws. Anybody ever see this? You ask your dog to sit or do something, and they don't understand it, and they go like this. <laughs> that's, a, that's a confused dog. It's like, I don't understand. Or you ever have a dog come over and do this to another dog? A lot of times it's play. So they're like, play. Or they see a bird. 
Uh, if you ever see a dog on the floor, um, if you work in foster or adoption and you're at an event and you look down on the floor and your dog is leaving little sweaty paw prints, get out of there. Give him a break. You can come back in a little bit, but he needs a breather. Because dogs don't usually sweat out of their pads unless they're, they're nervous or really hot. What do you think? Silly or serious? Serious. Silly. 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 Um, okay. Let's look at, let's get rid of their mouths. Okay? Because you think it's serious because you're looking at this mouth, right? No, you're going, oh my goodness, she's staring at them, her mouth is horrible. Let's, let's just block her head out of the, the whole thing. Look at her body. Is it bendy or straight? Yeah. If, if he, if the other dog runs into her, would she fall over? Yeah, that's silly. They're playing. Those are actually my two dogs. They love each other. They're, they're just a great fun. So, Good play, it's bouncy, inefficient movement, goofy. But if you see a dog who's slinking, all every single movement looks like it's intentional, that's when you have to get worried. And we have a cross your fingers now, a video. <laughs> okay. So this is a dog that um, is about ready to come up on another dog and see what happens. They just saw this other one. Tail's wagging. Right? But the, the tail's wagging. <laughs> watch, watch this in slow motion. Watch the white dog. But the owner of the white dog is more aware. Yeah. Yeah. Mommy! Dog hides, tail goes down low, comes right back up again. Um, yeah, so what do you think that was? Goofy? <laughs> yeah, that was predatory. That was very predatory. Um, to be fair, that little white dog looked like a bunny, right? <laughs> <laughs> they do get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> That's my favorite play about. Now, some dogs will do that when they're stressed, but it's kind of an extended play about, and they're like doing for a really long time. They're going, come on, just just release the tension, please. But usually, most play are like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're wiggling. Context matters. Where's the dog? <laughs> right? You go into somebody's backyard, and the dog is like standing on top of their dog house. Yeah, you might want to back up. So, hiding behind on top of. What about, where's the dog in relation to humans? What if they're not moving? They're just staying there. Increasing social distance, that would be moving away from you, right? And then decreasing is getting closer. So there's, there's a context that matters. Extra prize if you uh, can tell me what's going on with the uh, dog on the bed. We're gonna, we're gonna do your clue awareness here while I get a, a drink of coffee. I'm not hearing any laughing yet. Nobody's gone. He's sitting on another dog. dog. He's sitting on another dog. <laughs> this is Mo, the dog oh, that was in the video facing us that you thought was so so scary. That's her brother, Grom. Yes, he is completely passed out. <laughs> she was just up on there because it was squishy. I don't even know if she knew he was there. <laughs> what about this? What would you call this? There, there's a little hint up there. <laughs> <laughs> That's called resource guarding. <laughs> a little bit of a label right here. But why am I calling this all resource guarding? Well, this was pretty obvious, right? What's happening in this picture? Why? Uh, man, you got clue. Are you accomplishing? You should be. You got awesome clue awareness. <laughs> Pet sitter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you've got to be good at talking What about in this picture? What do you see in that picture that's off? One of them has some, looks like a chew or something. And yeah, there's a chew. And but did you see that? That's my husband. Oh. <laughs> He's in a papa's on chair. Don just decided to lay on him. <laughs> I can't take him out in the public or else. 
And then, of course, there's a lot of vocalizations, which I think we pay way too much attention to. But um, you had that with German Shepherd. What does that happen when a German Shepherd barking goes from, you know, high pitch to, sorry, there's a dog way in the back. Okay with that? I am not very good at barking. So. Yeah, high pitch barking is usually, I want that, or I'm worried about that, but when it's low, uh, then you know it's, it's changing. So let's put it all together. I want you to imagine, what does a friendly dog look like? Just imagine it in your mind. Okay, so those are some of the things that you might see if you see a really friendly, happy to be their dog and happy you're there too. Okay. Well, what about this? Imagine I bring in, there you go, there's, there's your Quest Essential Happy Dog. Of course, a pit bull. <laughs> Their little squeaky pig. This is Tessa. She's one of my client's dogs. Um, I've tried to steal her I don't know how many times. She's my favorite dog. She's coming over to my house in a little bit. Super excited. I mean, this dog is always like this. <laughs> always. You can do anything around her. And she's like, okay. Lovely, lovely dog. Rescue, by the way. Okay, so what if I bring in a dog that's stressed out? What does that look like? So here's some of the things that'll look like. So we have a dog. I asked for dogs to come today that were a little stressed out. What do you think the dog in the crate is over there? <laughs> yeah, here's the vocalization. Let me out of here. And hopefully we'll, we'll see a little bit of this, of this today when the, the dogs come out. I'm just checking. Yeah. We'll have them here at three. What about these guys? Great pictures of stress, huh? Yeah. All stressed out puppies. There's the same. And then arousal. This is um, Nelson at his Metallica concert. Right? His pupils will dilate. Hackles. I, I want you all to try something right now. Okay, just relax. We're going to do a whole audience demo, okay? Now, make the hairs on your arms go up. Do it. Do it. Okay, now drool. You can't do it, can you? These are um, what we call Pavlovian or unconscious reactions. You have no control over it, right? So dogs, when they're hackles go up, that just means that adrenaline has hit the system. And if you take a dog to a dog park or doggy daycare and their hackles go up, does that mean that they're you know, bite, but they're an aggressive dog, which is a term I never use or set the label. But what did I say about the Metallica concert? They get their beer spear spilled on them, and then what can happen? <coughs> You're already amped up, and you have a dog going in with hackles up, and something happens, that dog very well could all of a sudden go, this is a threatening situation when really it wasn't, because he was already screwed up, right? Do you have a question that I answer it? I don't understand what happens up. Oh, 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 okay. The hair is standing up on his back. So, yeah, sticking up on his back or sometimes up on their butt. So, yeah, those are hackles. And we call it pilo erection, which, yeah, everybody giggles at. So I was just like, hackles, what does it happen? And then orienting the hand. Um, I teach a lot of puppy classes, and a lot of people think that their dog is okay with something that they're doing. So I just, look, my dog is fine with me touching his paws, and the dog keeps turning his head to their hand. That dog is not fine. If you do it the first time, and they're like, oh, what was that? If they keep doing it, they're saying, stop it. So if they're orienting to your hand, that's usually not cool. So here is the same dog that was doing the stalking. This is 45 minutes into the walk after I played with the toy. So the dog is tired. Right? They ostensibly had a really nice walk. Right? Should should be kind of mellowed out, right? And it was a it was a pretty much a ventless walk, other than seeing that one uh, white dog right at the beginning. Nothing happened afterwards. And this is how this dog was for the whole entire walk. So we're distracted by a car, looking at me. Right? And I'm just I'm standing there talking because I want to see what will the dog do if I start ignoring the dog. <laughs> now, to be fair, do you see what's sticking out of that pocket? That's the toy that I was playing with, but look, it just looked away from the toy. This dog had ADD. 
<laughs> Mind you, there is nothing except for that car. So I get the toy, right? And then it's like, okay, I want the toy. But is he focused on the toy? No, no he's not grabbing my, my other arm. He knows where the toy is. <coughs> Of course, we have a lovely picture of the cell phone in that pocket. Gets distracted again, right? He leapt up and probably bit me well over 200 times. And I had that thick jacket on, and probably, you know, they wouldn't have been very deep bites, but that dog just couldn't calm down, you know? And I don't know what was going on, but it's something to think about. Dogs, dogs should calm down in a very normal circumstance like that. And, um, we were very calm and not really doing anything, and he was having a really hard time. So that's over arousal. There's signs of aggressive behaviors. Is there such thing as an aggressive dog? Does not exist. There can be aggressive actions in certain circumstances, but these, you know, especially dogs that live in people's homes, 99.999% of the time they're lovely dogs. It's just at one time, you know, where they start acting like a nerd, as I say. So here's a dog that's just awesome dog. This is Judah, he's awesome, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Except when he's in his backyard. You take him to the locker room, everybody. He's in his backyard, forget it. This is why, you know, this is what they read Jim Shepherd's for, right? <coughs> Sheep herding, but, you know, recently, what have we been breeding them for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It only takes two generations to get a um, group of dogs to be more like that than like a sheep herding dog. But we have we have follow up on that video if you're really happy. Can you be conflicted? Can you be really excited about something but yet also a little bit scared about it at the same time? Anybody like to see horror movies? I hate horror movies. Roller coasters? Oh my gosh, I love roller coasters. Why do I love roller coasters? Adrenaline rush is so much fun. But I'm not going in there going, oh, I'm going to meditate. No. I, I love the thrill. I also do downhill ski racing until I blew my knee out. I was a road racer on a bicycle. I got the sucker up to over 45 miles an hour once. Scary, right? But I can have conflicting you know, signs. I could be like, I'm really afraid to go down this thing. Ew, but I want to do it anyway, but I'm really scared. That can happen in a dog, and it can flip back and forth that quickly. So a lot of dogs that I will see, they want to say hi to you, but then they're scared of you. But they want to say hi to you. And you'll see a lot of dogs have conflicting body language. If you ever see that, just <coughs> Just don't. Because you do something like cough or sneeze or bend over or all of a sudden he smells you and you have this perfume he doesn't like, it, it'll change. Here's a great video of that. So in the room are three people. Um, the owner's holding the leash. Her uh, husband is the other person that she keeps looking to, to her um, right, that'd be your left. I'm at the doorway. And you saw the lip lick? So that's, no, oh, that, that's daddy. Hi, daddy. Right? But would you say she looks really happy? You know, joyful? No, she's not joyful. There's certainly something in there she's worried about. Oh, I must have moved. There's one more person in there. It's her dog walker who she adores. And you'll see her go up, oh, daddy, save me. There's weird people in my house. So there's her dog walker, right? And that's my stuff. So she's sniffing my jacket. Look at her toes. They're all splayed out. Her tail's wagging, but look how it's wagging. See how she froze? Right? She, she can't decide if she wants to meet me or not, right? She keeps going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We were best friends by the end of the appointment. I'll show you some techniques that, that will help with that. And I was having them pull her back on the leash for safety, obviously. She's calming down a little bit, but if I do anything, That's high alert, yeah. yeah, high alert, high arousal, right? She could be at that Metallica concert, and 
And this is where I start getting the hot dogs out. <laughs> <laughs> hot dogs solve everything. Or cheese. Sushi for me if anybody wants to find anything. <laughs> okay. That's that's pretty much it. She lays down and continues sniffing my stuff. We'll see if I keep going here. I love this video. This is actually from this dog ended up just doing absolutely fantastic. How do you think this dog feels about other dogs? You see you saw that other dog over there? Yeah? So I tell them, okay, run towards the other dog. What do you just do? <laughs> Look at his body language. Now we have the Metallica concert hackles going on. So you see his hair up on his back, right? Watch what he does next. <laughs> so he's really aroused, really kind of freaked out. Maybe something bad happened to him. You know, maybe he keeps wanting to say hello to dogs and he was being a rude puppy because maybe he wasn't socialized properly. He's a rescue. And a dog corrected him and it scared him because he wasn't used to that. And now he's thinking maybe meeting certain dogs are risky. But he likes other dogs. He loves other dogs. So he's conflicted. He doesn't know what to do. That's probably my number one um, appointment is uh, reactive on leash. They really do want to say hi, but are afraid to because they've had things happen. That's Gerald the Wonder Dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you get to see what happens when somebody does something wrong. And you can yell at me afterwards. All the stuff I did, stupid things I did. Watch this talk. It's like a potato and chlorophyll that is. And I'm, I'm throwing treats. Um, before I had gone in, those are a really high value treats that I had chucked in. Um, this, this place has just an absolutely fantastic setup where you can kind of open like a portion of the door and chuck treats in and then close it. So that was really nice and safe to do that. It was wonderful. And this dog was in the room by itself um, because she got up too upset being next to the other dogs and it was stressful for her. So they have these wonderful little rooms. But what do you think? She, how do you think she felt about me? Yeah, certainly scared. Yeah, not thrilled. She wasn't barking. She wasn't trying to our teeth. So what do we do when we encounter a dog? This is what we are here for. <laughs> you know why I spent all that time going over body language? Because what's the most important thing? Prevention. Prevent, 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 prevent. Right. So we're going to first anticipate: Is there a dog here? Could there be a dog here? So, what does that look like? Well, you ever see that in people's yards? Looks like a shed. You look at it closer, oh, it's kind of right, and there's the dog, right? You look at this, there's this path there. Maybe the dog gets out a lot, gets to run around the yard, I don't know. And this, of course, is our, our quest essential running path, you know, of a dog who's like running around. But really pay attention to your surroundings. You know, especially if you go to a neighborhood you're not used to going into, really kind of look into people's yards before you just say, I'm going to walk my dog by it or just walk me by it. And announce yourself. If you have to go anywhere near somewhere and you're, let's say you get to the corner and there's a house there and you're, you're just kind of feeling like there's something weird about this place, I would, I would grab the gate a little bit, maybe you know, make some noise on the fence because what's going to happen is that dog's going to be asleep. You're going to walk in front of the fence several feet and then all of a sudden the dog walk, wake, walks, wakes up and goes, wah, 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 wah. right? What if you knock on the gate first or on the fence first or go, hey, and then all of a sudden wah, 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 happens. Now you can get out of there and you're not already halfway down the fence. Um, if you have to go into the, uh, you know, a yard for whatever reason, toss something. I'm not saying throw rocks. I'm just saying go, go throw something to make a noise over there to see if anything comes out before you go through that gate, before you go through that fence. Especially if you have to go say hi to a neighbor or go to a client's house. It's always a good idea to just bring something with you that will make noise. I've had people you throw your keys. If you're already on that side of the fence, better to just throw your keys back out of there, have the owner come out, and then say, hey, can you put your dog out? can't read a dog's body language if you can't see the dog. That's Mo again. She's 
you like that ball. And then assess the risk. That's a dog at Home Depot. Did not like being there. So, you know, assess the situation definitely. Where are you? Where's the dog? And really, are you in a situation where the dog is maybe in the corner? You know, can't get away? You're, you're better off just going somewhere else. And then if you can, ask the dog to be contained. I always suggest call law, law enforcement if you think it's an unsafe situation. Because what if it were my dog that got out of the you know, fence or maybe a contractor came over to my house and left something open? My goodness, I would like you to call animal control ASAP because I want my dog to be safe, right? So if I see a dog loose or in a situation they shouldn't be in, just call, call law enforcement because it's going to take them a little while to get there. Just call them right away. The worst possible thing that happens is they say, you know what, this was really, everything's okay, I'm going to leave now. And you would be surprised at what sort of calls police officers get. They're most, very, most of them um, are no big deal, and they're fine with that. They love getting calls that are no big deal. Don't ever, ever feel embarrassed that you're calling the police and you didn't think it was important enough to do so. <laughs> do it. You're better off just playing it safe. Yeah. Well, the county has a non-emergency number. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. If you know that, get that. But you know, if you can't for whatever reason, absolutely. Yeah, I carry that with me. Um, ACO, that's animal control officers. So they have all this great equipment to, to capture the dog if, if they need to. And then ask for help. We all carry smartphones on us, right? Call somebody. And then safety is always for you first. Don't be trying to capture a dog that's, you know, running around loose if it's, you know, showing signs of fear because you're just probably going to put the dog in a worse situation. How do you deal with the problem? This is the fun part, right? How in the world do you deal with a dog who might be charging you? You're out on a walk or something like that. What do you do? Turn around. Put your foot out. Put your foot out, yeah. It's interesting. So, first thing you should do is, you probably saw it, get, is... Wait a minute. Get distance, right? And I don't have a slide for that. That's obvious, right? If you see a dog way over there and that dog is like snarling and barking and he's on the end of a chain, I'm not going to go, oh, hey, doggy, right? If I see a dog in the corner and the, that the hapless owner is doing this, it's for the audio, you know, I've got my, my cell phone up to my face and I'm not paying attention at all. Their dog is scared to death. I'm not going to go say, hey, puppy, right? So, you're going to get distance, but how do you distract a dog? I always tell police officers that they should, you know, throw their sandwich, right? And they never seem to want to do that. <laughs> they don't really attach their food. So throw it underhand and, so that you don't scare the dog, right? You're not going to be like, oh, here's some treats. <laughs> right? Throw it overhand. You get really good at it, and I'll actually demo this for you. We'll demo it again um, so it's on camera. A little bit better, and I'll, I'll do it with the, the best reward ever. When you talk about throwing something, this is called lamb lungs. Yeah, those are nummy. But if I throw them, just I barely move my arm at all. It was just kind of a wrist flick. Um, I'm sure there's a sport out there somewhere that um, you know has you practice that. But I can I can lob that thing pretty far, and those things are really light. So you can use that. Um, you can make a noise, so your keys are really great to kind of just throw a distraction and then run in the other way. Definitely in the opposite direction, right? <laughs> and then what about this? The dog is still coming towards you. you. You've tried everything. This is, and I say use your pack. That's because I do this a lot for search and rescue. But this is the bag that I use when I go to a Backpack, right? And every single time I go to somebody's house, I'm walking up to their door and then I grab onto the top handle of the pack and I always lock the door when the door is opened. Because it could just be a dog who jumps a lot and hasn't had his nails trimmed, so you know, I don't get scratched up. But if that dog goes for something, what's he gonna go for? He's gonna go for the backpack. And I'd much rather have the dog bite the backpack than me. So that will do it. Um, use a door to block yourself. There's a trash can over there in the corner, a chair. Just use something put in between you and the dog. Now, here's my favorite thing. It's raining today. How many of you brought these? Yeah. 
Postal carriers, I don't know if they're still taught this, were taught to bring an umbrella. So umbrellas are the best. And the really good ones are the ones that you can hit with the button and they go boom, because that will startle the dog, right? And they'll go back. So I love umbrellas. And they won't hurt the dog, right? And you can protect your dog or your kids or anybody with you. It's got this great handle, so you can use it. And most dogs, when they're charging at you, they're scared, aren't they? They want you to go away. So if you come out with this big, huge umbrella, the dog's probably going to run off, right? It is not worth it. So umbrellas are the best. And they have umbrellas now that are the size of you know, a coffee mug, you know, travel coffee mugs, and real thin. And you can just clip them to your belt. And they just, they're awesome. I don't have one. I have my broken umbrella. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and then just do whatever you can to increase distance. I oftentimes go behind cars and trees and things like that. Here's what we do. This is the fun part that we're going to do in a couple of minutes. Police officers really, really don't like being told that they should make themselves look less threatening and to avert their gaze and make you better noises like this. <laughs> Really difficult. So we use the word blade because it sounds very, very tough. You're going to blade your body. So it's the same thing that we're taught, you know, in the whole dog world is that you make yourself look smaller, less threatening. So you're going to, instead of facing the dog, you're going to turn your body to the side, right? So you're looking to the side of your body because that isn't, you know, the big part of you. You're going to look away because if you're staring at the dog, that's threatening, right? If you look away from the dog, then the dog knows that you're not going to do anything to him. Fake it till you make it, okay? <laughs> Take a deep breath, and I mean it. I mean, seriously, just smile, breathe, move slowly but smoothly, right? You don't want to look like a predator, you know, where you're doing very slow movements, but just, you know, I'm squatting down. Squatting down. You're, when you have a dog coming at you and it's like potentially a dangerous situation and the umbrella didn't work, right? Or maybe before you take the umbrella, you're not trying to say hello to a dog and make friends. That is what you do when you want to say hello and make friends, maybe to a scared dog that's sometimes getting down to their level, although you don't necessarily have to do that. And I'm starting to tell people not to do that unless your dog walker going into somebody's house trying to make buddies with them. Um, stand still because I'd much rather have a chunk coming out of my back end than my face, right? So it works either way. I know you have to come out in a second. <laughs> so just act, act loose. And this is what I tell everybody at Doggy Day here. Pretend like you're royalty and you just heard a really funny joke. That's how you want to act. And it, you have to, you know, how does royalty act? You know, they have their head high, they're very relaxed. You know, everything's wonderful, they're just kind of walking around. That's how you want to act, okay? And they don't look at the people, right? They look up. Don't reach and definitely don't run, okay? It doesn't make sense, but if you're running and the dog's afraid of something and they think, oh my gosh, the scary thing is running away, there must be a T-Rex, I'm going to run too. And they're going to go in the same direction you're going, which is not what you want. And then evaluate the next step on the base, based on the dog's reaction, just like we talked about the slides before where we say, hey, you want a cookie? And the dog changed. Then maybe he's your buddy now. Look at, it, look at what happened with this dog. So the dog is... Look at its back legs. This is what I'm talking about, looking at a dog's body. The police officer facing that dog, totally leaning into the leash. And the, what the dog was doing, if that were a really confident dog, his back feet would be like displayed like that. Okay? His back feet would be centered because he wants to launch himself forward. This dog is waiting for escape, left or right, left or right. He's getting ready. And that dog is terrified. All the side turns to the side is like, hey, okay, not so bad. Was barking a little bit, but certainly far more relaxed. And actually, after a while, the leash, the leash got pretty relaxed too. Last resort, defense, right? So first thing, just whatever it is that you have with you, right? My favorite thing to do, um, before you even take anything out, 
is yelp sit. All dogs sit. Unless they have problems with their structure or something else going on, they usually naturally will sit. They don't know stop. They don't know plus or down or sita or siente, but they sit really, really, you know, boldly. Because you're trying to stop the dog, right? Before you have to take out an air horn, scary noise. Um, I have this great, great stuff. This is spray shield. Um, I have used it once. Works great. It's just citronella. But I shouldn't just say it's just citronella. This stuff will jet like 10 to 20 feet. It's like a hose. And it just startles the dog. It's not going to harm them. And it's really good for bug repellent. <laughs> so yourself in it. And Baltimore Police Department, um, they, this isn't a study. It's just after police reports. They had something like 20 incidents once. Um, and instead of shooting a dog, thankfully, they decided, hey, should try my pepper spray. And they tried their pepper spray 100% of the time it worked. The dogs ran away. And these are residence dogs in bad neighborhoods, you know, drug dealers and stuff like that. Fighting, fighting type, not happy dogs. And it worked. It worked wonderful. So pepper spray is a great thing. I would suggest the gel, though, instead of the spray. Because if there's a little breeze, guess who's going to get pepper sprayed too? <laughs> you are! So you probably don't want that. I have two this last one last week. Yes! Uh, and it's on Amazon, so I'm going to get some dollars. Well worth it, yeah, right? In the gel. In the gel, yeah. 18 feet. Wow. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 I say it wrong. I call it capsation, like capsicum. It's um, the hot stuff. And when it gets in your mucous membranes, it burns. That never hurt you. But um, if there's a little bit of a breeze and you're spraying out the dog, it's going to come back right at you. So when cops use pepper spray, they pepper spray themselves too. They, they have to go to the, I was going to say the vet. They have to go to the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of them go to the vet. <laughs> Were you going to raise your hand? Yeah. I have a question about the fence. What if you're uh, with a dog on leash and say you have a neighbor that doesn't like to keep their dog on a leash and their dog has determined it, had a very bad first interaction with your dog and since then will always attack your dog? Oh boy, that sounds more like a legal problem. Um, that's next month. But. Yeah, that's next month. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is I, I always go through the, the same continuum of force. Right? Yeah. First you talk to them, then you write them a letter, <laughs> then you ask your neighbors to write letters, and then you call the cops. You know, that's something, you know, when they have the, this is in Virginia, and I am not aware too much of the Maryland laws, but the um, Virginia dangerous and vicious dog laws, they don't look at breed at all. Yay! Which is really awesome. But they really do look at the owner's past history. And if the owner keeps like letting the dog out and breaking the law, they are more likely to get labeled a dangerous dog simply to cause the humans who have the dog to follow the law. It's not that they're saying that dog is any more dangerous in itself. It's just the way that the people are acting that put that, that dog who's probably scared in a bad situation. So unfortunately for you, that just puts you in a situation where you're just going to have to do the best you can. And of course, that's a legal thing. So I'm not going to really answer that, but yeah, there, there's very little that you can do to magically. But some of the techniques you can use, if they yell at you for giving the dog treats, <laughs> um, hey, you know. <laughs> now that the leash law. Yeah, yeah that's we, the thing. We, we, we had a court date next month. Yeah. It got to the, after the fifth attack, it was we finally yeah. call animal services. But. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's that's something that the legality, you know, they're going to have to. Luckily, it's only been scratches. But still, yeah. there's laws, right? Leech laws are important. Yeah. Is there a safe way to um, break up dogs that are like fighting? Like if the dog comes up to your dog? Love that. Yes. Because um, I was actually going to get to that. Um, if you have an umbrella with you, even when it's not raining, this is something that you can put down in between dogs. Now, something that they have at daycare are crate trays. Crate trays are, you know, the flat things that they put in the bottom of crates. Um, any object that you 
have a bag or a backpack, that's why I like having backpacks, even if you're just going to kind of walk your dog down the street for five minutes, because you never know, somebody's dog gets out of the house. If you put that in between them, usually just come down from the top and put that down, they'll be biting the backpack, and that gives you a chance to um, you know, get the leashes and pull them away. Never grab for a collar. Ever, 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 ever. You will get bit, and maybe repeatedly. Um, it's so, oh, there are other techniques, but I, I can't really cover them here because it's very visual. So you might be able to ask um, your dog's friend or somebody else just because um, I'll have to eventually get to the dog. Um, so I have the same kind of scenario as that guy, but um, so I have two virtual dogs, and we've been attacked by off leash dogs like, probably four or five times. Wow. And um, after the last time where the dog made contact, um, Terrible, terrible. Yeah. Being attacked by all three dogs. Um, but I carry the Citronella spray. Yeah. I have like one in every single jacket. Yes. Well, since I've been carrying the spray, there have been no more attacks. But, um, sorry, it was just so traumatic being attacked by all three dogs. Yeah, quite sorry. Of mine. sorry about that. It's scary. Um, yeah, so it hasn't happened since I've been carrying that spray. But what do you think about spraying the dogs when you have your dogs? Is it, or will they redirect? Or do you think this spray, so I haven't used the spray. Good question. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it depends on your aim. Mm -hmm. It is very startling. Yeah. And, you know, it is okay to spray in their face because the, the, we're trying to use non-lethal lethal force here, right? I mean, what's next after that? You know, that would be actually hurting the other dog you know, kicking them and hitting them and doing horrible things to them. So if you have to spray them directly in the face, right? Mm -hmm. Hope the, the point of this thing, mm -hmm. um, the spray shield or pet defender and all these other things, is to spray at the other dog as they're coming at you. Mm -hmm. And usually on the approach, they'll peel off. You're not spraying them while they're going at other dogs. And I don't know, a lot of loud noises usually stop dog fights pretty quickly. Yeah. So even just a loud noise will do it, like the air horn, but um, I would be surprised if the dog kept going out of this. But uh, how many experiences do I have where dogs are actually able to make contact with two dogs mm -hmm. and it's that serious? I, I haven't had that happen where I actually had to use that. Okay. Um, I used it in another dog that was like rushing at us and I was just like, yep, yeah, no. And you can use this prophylactically, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, Prevention, right? We're not going to just see, oh, let's see what the dogs do. If somebody's dog is off leash and charging at you, so what? Their dog gets some really good citronella on them. They have some nice bug control for a little while. <laughs> that, that's the worst thing that happens. And they're breaking the law, right? The dog's off leash, right? So you didn't do anything wrong. You just protected yourself and you didn't hurt the dog, which is number one, most important. We don't want to hurt dogs. All right, we're going to almost get off the slideshow here, and I'll, I'll definitely do more questions definitely afterwards. Here's Judah again. And this is one of the techniques that we use. This is actually counter conditioning, meaning I'm making him think that I'm awesome by giving him treats, and I'm doing it from a distance. I'm actually chucking treats. Now I'm really far away. Um, this is a GoPro, so it's pretty good distance. And yeah, there goes the treats again. And then I'm a little bit closer. Now he's probably reacting too much right there. I should have been a little bit further back. He was a noisy, noisy guy. But look at his body language. Is it changing a little bit? Yeah, it's changing a little bit. He forgot to swallow. I guess we should swallow. Now I just I think I just put on a hat and I said, okay, I'm gonna back up. <laughs> I'm gonna go over here. Oh, that's not working. Look at his tail. But it's happy. No. Has he ever jumped at them? Yeah, I know. I was worried about that too. I said, you know, we have liability issues here. You should probably uh, think about getting a higher fence. Because, I mean, my goodness, you can see a deer on the other side of the fence and go over here. Her, you know? Now look at him. His mouth much more relaxed. He's just waiting for treats now. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, every, every appointment I go to, I'm, I'm just a vending machine. <laughs> and now we're just talking. Look how relaxed he is. Yeah. Here's this gentleman's treat, lady. <laughs> 
And he ended up doing very well. And I have a funky hat on, because these are my people's hats. Now you get to yell at me for all the bad stuff. And I'll, I'll take questions at the end, because we have to bring dogs in, they're all waiting in their car, so. So this is me being done later on. Yeah, there, there's where, and see the mouth movements? The snapping, the really slow movements. Now she was taking treats for a really long time. She had a really loose body when I after I had come in, and then I had actually gotten down on my knees because she was getting calmer. And like I said, you know, it's like um, I had somebody in the audience ask, "Well, why don't you get down on your knees and get to your side like it?" And all, that's when she said, "Ooh, uh, hold on a second. A dog stares at the place they're going to bite. <laughs> Where is she staring? Yeah, I, it was either my corded or jugular artery. Yeah. And I'm throwing treats, and look, I mean, you can tell how stressed I am. Look at what I'm doing with my breathing, right? And how am I going to loosen up if I move at all? What is she going to do? React. Yeah, she might react. She might be so tense. How come she didn't go after the treats? She is so upset. She is so terrified that treats mean nothing now. And what we call that, it's a amygdala hijack. And that's fight or flight or freeze. And um, your frontal cortex, which is the thinking part of your brain, turns off. That's why when your dog is in a very scary situation or tense situation or exciting situation, and you yell sit, 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 or down, the dog isn't doing sit or down because they understand it. They're doing it because you intimidated them so much that they just kind of shut down. So now, yeah, see, and she's still staring. How long have we been watching this? She hasn't moved. She has moved. I think I think I went by hand at some point here. Um, somehow she got out of there. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. So what do I have at my disposal? What do I have to protect myself? I have the rug. Yeah, I have the little, the little rug. I think what, what upset her is I put my camera on that water bowl. And she thought that's weird. She was fine. Because, yeah, fine, quote unquote. She wasn't fine, but you know, she was better. So much of it would be also by that time you could be secreting terror. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah, all of the pheromones that are coming off of me, they're not happy and jolly, are they? All right, so I'm deciding I am going to make a move here and see if I can get her to move too. And I'm ready to grab that that fleece thing. I'm trying to get her to move out in front of me. She did. And there she goes. Now I put my arm, do you see where I put my arm? It was right on her shoulder in between her, her neck and my arm so that she couldn't actually turn around and bite me. Um, she actually calmed down, started eating treats again. I slowly backed out of there. But that was really dumb on my part. I went to a small room. Nobody else was there. The door was closed. I had nothing to protect myself with. That was stupid. That was really dumb. I put myself so prevention, not reaction. That's why. All right. So we're going to do this with some dogs, which is going to be really fun. We're going to move some of this. Um, and those are just some things that we can do. But I'm going to shut all of this down. And don't go anywhere yet. I would like to thank you for coming out on a rainy day. I am going to get some dogs out, one at a time. Thank you so much for bringing dogs. And if there's, is there anybody in the audience that has dogs like sequestered somewhere else? I know there's two. There's some in the car. Some in the car. But, 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 but I'm not sure they should come out. OK. Okay. So what we have is we can we're gonna keep this super super safe because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unplug all this nonsense and I'm gonna move my stuff out of the way and we have these tape lines up the front of the room and what we're gonna do is we have an X on either side here. And we're going to have one person and only one dog kind of demo this. And what's going to happen is, don't
Don't move from the edge. Okay. Um, this is the absolute no zone here. So if you happen to be somebody handling a dog, don't let your dog cross this line. Right? We don't know exactly how long the leash is because they might be just on a loose leash, and all of a sudden the leash becomes taut. Right. So we have the no zone here. And the first step we're going to do is show, look at five language of the dogs. You know, see, not all the dogs I'm, I'm going to have come out are going to cats. Okay. Some of the dogs know me, so they'll be fine with it. And oh, can you move the projector? I'd like to move the whole table out of the way. Sure, place. that's. Thank you. Because I didn't want to have. Thank you. And what happens if I unplug this? Are you going to throw something at me? Um. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Maybe a little. I'm, I'm not going to touch it. Okay. <laughs> but once we get the table out of the way, we will um, grab the dogs. And Courtney, can you do me a giant, giant, giant favor since I'm stuck up here? Do you know where my sketchy van is parked? Yeah, that's the white one. The big sketchy one. <laughs> um, on the driver's Seat, uh, passenger seat in the front. Uh oh. This is what happens when you're blonde. You lose your keys. All right. Playing blonde card. What? Where did my keys go? All right. Well, I'll unlock them with my phone and we will find the keys later. I have a whole bunch of handouts for everybody. Um, you can go home with some cards that actually um, tell you what you should do at Cheat Sheet. I saw some of you taking notes. Awesome, because you're going to remember more. Um, but there's some really quick, nice little cards that you can go over on how to assess body language, what to do in the situation. You don't have to memorize all of that. Um, I'm going to unlock it from my phone, Courtney. And so your husband in the kitchen. Somebody's in the kitchen, because um, that door's locked. He's going to have to let you in. All right, hopefully, cross your fingers, this will actually open the door. And then we'll have um, dogs come up. We know we do have one dog. We'll let Bob get the, the film going. We're going to do two things. Jennifer, where are your handouts? Um, she, that's what she's getting. Because I, oh, I okay. inadvertently left them in my van. I brought in all of my other stuff, all of my promo materials. But I didn't bring those in. Um, but you see these two two X's here. So we, depending on where the dog is coming in, we will um, have either the person with the dog standing here or just the person by themselves. And what do most people do at the very beginning when they see a dog? Do they approach like this? No. No, no they approach like this. So we're gonna face the dog, and then we're gonna lay our body. Does that mean you still look at the dog? No. No, you face away, right? You. Relax, and we're going to see what the dog's body language does. And then if the dog wants to take some treats, I'll show you um, something called treat and retreat. Deborah, do they do treat and retreat? Do you have any other trainers here? No, I'm sure they do. Um, mm -hmm. Story of Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel, how would I do the treat for Hansel and Gretel, or ET? <laughs> what does that look like? Trail of treats towards the thing, right? Never do that. If I put, you know, food on the floor, sushi for me, and it's towards something that I'm afraid of, what happens when I get about halfway? Where's my adrenaline level? It's rising, right? You know what probably happened with the white dog in that last video? I was in there for too long, right? And her adrenaline level went up so far that she was just like, no, we're not, right? So what you should do instead is toss treats away from you. So the dog has to move away from you. So they get double rewarded. They get a treat coming from you, and they also get to get distance from you. And then when they come closer again, oh, yeah, my dog, and you toss another treat. So we'll have Athena come in. I guess these lights, about as bright as they get. So you guys are going to get really good at being dog body members. Get that dog. <laughs> so I'm going to have Athena come in. We're going to see her with me. She knows me. And then if anybody's brave enough to just stand on the text, there you go. Okay, so let's, and you can spin if you need to spin to keep her from. So what do you think about her, her body language? Let's, let's look at her eyes. I'm trying not to get too, too close just because I know it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> that was pretty cute. What do you think? 
assessing the situation. She's <laughs> assessing, yeah. No, she sees dad. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, a little bit of vocalization, right? She's got a little bit wiggly. Who is she facing when she got wiggly? Raise your hand, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, oh, slippery floor. That's always fun. Oh, see a lip lick there. A little bit of stress. Where's the tail just do? It's down. What about her ears? They're back. Are they back and down or just back? Now I'm going to actually ask Courtney, are her ears down or back? They're down. Well, oh, they're back. Now I'm facing her. What kind of growl is that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you say she's a little conflicted? Yes. Yeah. If she were really happy and wiggly and she saw me, I'm facing her and I'm like, hey, puppy. Now how did it change? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit, but she but she's pretty amped up. She's pretty excited. Do we have any anybody here that would like to um, be victim money volunteer? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to first. Okay, so I'm gonna have you sound the X. I'm gonna get out of the picture. Okay, now just now go ahead and lean lean forward and go ahead. And you can let her out at the end of the leash. If she has she knew what she wants. You can talk to her. Hi there. Hello. So what did that do? Is she moving forward? Not at all. Not at all. She she's cautious. <laughs> she's cautious. Okay, I want you to stand up straight. Now blame your eyes. Look and look away. Be calm. What did she just do? Oh, no. Not yet. <laughs> oh. What do you think happening? I think she was paying more attention to you because you were talking. Yeah. So maybe she was distracted by me. Oh, now, now what does she do? Oh, I'm gonna go back to oh, you. That's not okay, so let's change the situation. Here, here we have. She can't beat, right? <laughs> you are going to underhand chuck treats as far as you possibly can. Try to get Courtney. No, try to get me. Oh, treats. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. And she makes treats out of it, but she looks back. Go ahead and toss another one. Yeah, she she vending machine. This way, but you're facing the dog. Oh, let her go get it. That's okay. You can kick it, Dad. There you go. Show her where it is. Is she vocalizing anymore? Look at how she's walking. Go ahead and chuck another one. Is she worried about this lady in any A little bit. Oh, no, there's Bob there. That's okay. We'll, we'll and, uh, Dad, can you go get that treat so she's not thinking money? Yeah. Now, is she licking, licking her lips a lot now? Right? But she's not staring at her, is she? No, she's no longer staring at the scary person. You can actually run away now. And where would you go? You're in this actual room. Where would you go? I would go there. Yes. Yeah. She goes to the door. There's a, like, Thing, and it looks like it's on wheels there. You've got all of these these things in the room. So every single room I go into, I assess the situation. But that was awesome. But how is she now? What is she looking for? I want you to fake throwing a treat under hand when she looks at you. Make sure she's looking at you. She She looks at Go ahead and throw it. But is she now growling at her? Yeah. Can you just open the Thank you so much. Awesome. So, thank you. This is, she's not up for adoption, so sorry. <laughs> this, this is Courtney's dog. She's awesome at dog training. She's not done yet, though. Um, yeah, almost the highest scores ever in my evaluations. Um, but tell me a little bit about Athena. Like, why did you bring her? Um, she just has weird phobias. Like, she's particularly afraid of men. People with facial hair. She actually was afraid of me when I put my hoodie on with a hat. Like she didn't recognize me at all. So like, she has these random things that she's afraid of. So she's a really sweet dog, but she's just a little timid at first. Yeah. And she has been. Uh, she used them for. She's very well trained, right? She's great, great dog. But yeah, she gets scared. She gets startled. And um, oh sweetie, you know, when the shiny floor doesn't help. So I think we have some more dogs. Would she be okay if she's, 
she can go in the car if she needs to, because it's pretty cool out. Hey, say, you have somebody in the car with her, so she's okay. Hi! Did you realize it was me? Um, or she can be in the crate so we can have, we have somebody else with a dog, right? We have some other dogs. Yay! Who's this? Okay, and what I'm going to ask everybody to do is I'm going to have you go behind the um, table there with all the stuff on it. So that's where we're going with the dog. And then, yes, thank you. If you're in the aisle, just hold really still. There you go. That works too. And I'm going to move to this side. So we're going to be getting a volunteer victim on this side. So cookies more or less people reacting. So uh, watch people come and go from oh. the event. There was one woman who came in late. Yeah. Got her all up. So what I'd like you to do, what's your name? I'm so sorry. Craig. Craig, thank you so much for bringing her. Now, is she for, up here for adoption? She is. Uh, She's temporary, temporarily living with us. Oh, she is. She's not convinced of that, though. <laughs> so without anybody staring at her and bothering her right now on the X, how do you assess her body language right now? And I would just hold on to handle Craig so that she can just kind of move about, move about the cabin freely. So just hold on to the, so she has more room on the leash. Yeah, and you can hold it with a desk if you want. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> She's exploring. Yeah. Is she confident? Yeah. No. If somebody came through that door right now. What do you think? Think she'd be thrilled? No. 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 Do we have a volunteer that would like? Does she have any particular men or women that she's more upset about? I've only seen her react to women. Oh, interesting. So we need yeah. a woman. Well, apparently we men are proud of it. Somebody wants to make friends. So we're going to have you try to come through this aisle here. And you have to her. I think she can see the steps. Oh, yeah. You can hide in the kitchen and look through the window. That would be great, guys. <laughs> No, not you. I'm, I'm telling you, he's got to the kitchen to maybe move out of the doorway. So, what would you like me to do? So, thank you. Yes. Very first, yeah, stand on the X. You're going to just turn and face her. And everybody watch. As soon as she turns and faces her, you see the lip lift and the paw lift. Yeah. Okay, and Dad, could you do me a favor? Can, or Craig, can you fix her leash? I don't want her lunging on that and then, like, flipping out. <laughs> and I love she's on a face hold through this a lot. Okay, so can you turn and face her? And, she didn't notice it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you see that tail wag? Very interesting. What's the name again? Cookie. Cookie. Hi, Cookie. Hi. Okay, don't move forward, Craig. Just stay where you are. She's in the no zone, so we're not going to go anywhere for She's vocalizing. You might not be able to hear it, but she snipped the air, and then she started vocalizing. Okay, now um, when she comes back and looks at you again, I want you to say, hey, Cookie, and kind of reach her hand towards her. Hey, Cookie. Cookie, I see. You're not even looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now what did Dad say that she reacted to, or Craig said she reacted to? People appearing from doorways. So what you're going to do, yeah, go to the kitchen, wait until she's kind of distracted for a little bit. Wait until she's not looking at you, so I'll throw a treat. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead and come back in. Right now. There's two minutes. Yeah, go ahead and come back in. So she's way wiggly, but do you see that lip lick? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a lip lick. Okay, now blade your body. Nice. See what she does. And she's really pulling on, on her harness, isn't she? On her face on. She's worried about us in the audience. Yeah. Uh -huh. she's like, oh, scary. But she was able to, to look away from her, right? Yeah. And that's what we want. We want a dog coming at us. <clears throat> See if you can kind of throw it without moving. So you're just going to not move your body too much. There you go. She didn't even see the one you threw. It's so perfect. Yeah, well, that was mine. Cookie. Nice. Oh, <laughs> so she can totally get out of there, right? Yeah, awesome. Nice job. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> oh, do you know anything more about cooking?
Ruby, how old she is? She should be about four years old. She she was rescued from uh, Harvey, so out of Houston. She's Aww. a Houston girl. Mm -hmm. uh, she's sweet, sweet as can be. Uh, she has just started reacting to women. I see. Really on, and it kind of comes and it goes. Mm -hmm. She will greet people at the door mm -hmm. and then turn around and two minutes later just start growling. <laughs> Unsure, yeah, that unsure yeah. growl that she did there. Um, yeah. Yep. And, you know, who knows why? It looks like she wasn't attacked before you got her, right? So who knows where she went before, but it certainly wasn't somebody that, you know, spayed, spayed her before her first cycle. Nothing against that, but, you know, maybe it tells us that she was in a place where they, they couldn't afford it or, you know, let her run around. Maybe she wasn't socialized. I have no idea. Um, but, I'm not surprised. Do you ever hear of a dog who's fine for a long time and then all of a sudden isn't fine and nothing's happened? Well, something has happened, the passage of time, right? They can get more upset. Thank you so much. And same <laughs> with Cookie. Now, with, you're with which one? Homeward Trails. Okay, so she's from Homeward Trails. They're in Fairfax Station, but they'll adopt anywhere. Um, they have a lot of fosters, and the fosters are everywhere as well, and they're, they're great. So you yes. can look her up, probably, is she on the internet? She's on she the has, Awesome, so she's on the pet finder, she's just so lovely. She's like, it's just really nice. Yeah, you are. Look how quickly she warmed up. She calmed down really pretty good, considering we've got so many people in this room. That's that's pretty good. She can sit in the back one. Yeah, I, I thought so. it. So we're going to take her back now. Does that mean she's going to be perfectly fine? Just no, right? Because now she's coming back through the gauntlet of people. So if you're at the table or if you're on that side of the room, um, please help Craig escape with Cookie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I know I'm kicking you out of your spot. Craig can't escape. I mean, we love to have him up there the whole time. But... And great job. See, as she went by, I was watching. It's always a social experiment. You guys you know, over in the audience, you looked away from her, didn't you? Isn't that cool? A lot of times you go to an adoption event, everybody's staring at all the dogs, right? Yeah. I mean, she's just so quietly left. It was so lovely. Does anybody else have a dog with them? Because we can bring them in through the front. We're not sure. You do? Oh, you just moved your hand. Okay. I'm going to see. Hold on one second. Hi. I know. What if you see if there's somebody in the car with a dog? And if so, we will need to come around all the way to the front of the building and come in through that door. And all standards, if the floor you can ask what the to the front. Hi, Sandy. You're not in there? What I mean? Oh my gosh, it's raining. <laughs> While we're waiting um, for the other dog, um, questions. Yay! I love questions. And I know that we're getting kicked out of here really soon. Um, where is Deborah? Oh, Deborah's talking. Are we kicked out of here at any particular time? No. I mean, we need to be out, out by five. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I know we have to clean up chairs and make it all look pretty. What is your question? Um, I have a Moya who hears or, you know, up permanently and his tail up permanently. Mm -hmm. And the breeder has said a lot of other dogs will bully them because they look this certain way. And I never know if. You know, if someone's another dog and they should launch your car, do you think it's a little more because of that? Or is there anything I should approach things in an awesome disadvantage, you know, having her look yes. some this way? Yes, she is at a disadvantage. Um, and, you know, this is kind of, um, what is the word, the sort of evidence that it's a, a one-person story. Help me, somebody. One-sided, just we're only getting, yeah, start, we only get the approach. Yeah, anecdotal, anecdotal. So it's kind of anecdotal evidence here. But um, remember the picture of the bulldog, and I said with all those wrinkles. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dogs like Akitas, dogs with you know fur sticking up all over the place, so spits, huskies, things like that. Um, they are at a disadvantage because they look like they're all the hairs are up on their back, so they look aroused. 
Um, even when their ears are relaxed, they might look carry them a little bit higher than maybe, say, a German Shepherd dog. When they're relaxed, they're like, Whoop, you know, and then they, they can almost touch. Um, and so it depends on the dog. We're talking about cropped tails and cropped ears. You know, it changes the look of the dog, but some dogs we breed to look like that. And all it takes is one dog to believe that she's feeling a different way than she's actually feeling and correcting her. And all she's doing is saying, I just wanted to say hi. I was doing nothing wrong. And so now you get the sort of dog that you saw, that little black dog, meaning Gerald the Wonder fake dog, who now thought, oh no, all dogs potentially could be bad, but I really like dogs, but this dog could attack me, so I'm going to just bark first and see what happens. And since Gerald, the wonder dog, did nothing, what happened to that breeding? It was just kind of a pretty much normal, but very, very overzealous breeding, right? So does she bark at dogs first? Well, I, I mean, I got her at 11 weeks. Oh, and oh, okay, cool. A little over a year. Okay, she wasn't. Like, she pulled all the time. She's a smart dog. Yeah, okay. it's a little bit less than, but she's pretty good and she's very nice. I mean, I've only heard her growl twice since I've owned her. Wow. So she will pull, and so if she sees another dog, she'll pull, and then about half the time she kind of dip a bit. Okay. But if they bark back, then she really pulls. And oh. I don't know if just partly because she's looked as well. I'll say, you know, the barking, the barking on the tree, and I'll say, on my, you know, she turns her head, then I give her a treat, but she stays away. Oh, nice. Like, I could kind of try to lessen it, but I don't know. If that situation moves a certain way, and if I should. I, I, okay, this is, this is me, okay? So this is Jen's opinion. I hate dog parks most of the time, because I never know who's going to come in the game after me. So dog park would be totally lovely. But I also hate online, on week readings, because, how many people do you think can really assess their dog? Well, so okay, so we have we have the next dog. Hold on one second, I'm gonna see she sees me. Aw, so we, we have a lot of handsome going on. And I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna see if she sees me. Okay, we'll definitely get the dog around though. <laughs> Hopefully I can do it without the dog seeing. Okay. So there is an X on the floor, and you just stand on the X. Okay? We'll have one dog at a time. Fantastic. And when you come in, we'll ask you the who this is. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna go way over here since you're coming in through that door. And I'm gonna go over here. I want them to focus on somebody else <laughs> and see if they'll come in. Come on in! You see that X right on the floor? Awesome. So just stand right there, hold it really tight. So, what do you think? Right off the bat, this is how much time you get, right? John's running at you, this is all, this is all the time you have. Stress? Okay. Why do you say oh? Oh. What about her tail? It's wagging. How is it wagging? Very stiff wagging, right? Now you keep switching back and forth. Does she know somebody over there? No? Okay. She likes somebody. Somebody smells good. I don't know. Look at the lines on her face, and I, I apologize, it's a little bit dark in here, but can you see them? She has lines in her face, so she's kind of got punched up facial muscles. And the panting. What's the temperature outside right now? 46 degrees. Did you run her before coming in? There you go. Oh, there we go. Now, does that mean she's okay and go say hi now? No. No, just because she sat down? Now, a lot of times dogs will sit down and they assess the situation, so you might have a dog that you like to walk on leash, and it's like, oh, my dog barks at other dogs, but I just have them sit down and wait while the other dog goes by. And so, well, your dog might just be 
waiting for the other dog to get closer and they're just assessing the situation. That doesn't mean they're doing work, right? Oh, there it goes. There goes the tail. That's a better tail. You just have to jump it up. Yeah. Now, um, please tell me about her first before we get on. Okay. Um, this is Betsy. Um, I've been her foster for about a month now. She's two or three years old. Um, their guess is that she's a shepherd dog. Um, she is a dog who is very well behaved at home, um, not so great on the leash, and she has a lot of uh, anxiety at adoption events. When people come to meet her, sometimes she will she bark, she'll be reactive with other dogs on the leash, so she's flying at home off the leash with my dog, she's my kid. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm hoping to get a guy up here this time because I keep having women volunteer. And we always have number of men at dog events, but um, all dog events, by the way. Anybody want to try? No? And we're going to have to go with the girls? <laughs> oh, you'll do it? <laughs> he got fallen and told to come today. <laughs> Let's see if you learned anything. Were you, were you listening or just being out back there playing Pogo? Playing Pogo. Okay. <laughs> if any of you know what that means, I'm going to make fun of you. And then I'm going to ask you what that means. Um, so go ahead and just face her. There's the spatula tongue, the spoon tongue, yeah? And look at her ears. Are they down and back? There they went down. Yeah, they're down and back. Lip licking. Head low. Head low. Yeah. Okay, do me a favor and kind of lean towards her, talking to the main voice. Hello. <laughs> oh my gosh, she loves him. <laughs> <laughs> or do me a favor, turn to the side and just ignore <laughs> What did she just do right away? Looking at him. She immediately looked away. Huh, okay. Well, let's leave now, right? Look how relaxed she just got. All right. Does she have any food allergies? No. Yay! So you're going to try treat and retreat. If any of you have reactive dogs at home, this is what you do. If you have really shy, shut down, super scared dogs, treat and retreat is the way to go. It's magic. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So you're going to try to um, hit the door behind her, not her. I know you. Um, <laughs> underhand and try not to make huge arm movements. Try to use all wrist. All wrist. So you notice that he kind of turned towards her. <laughs> That's okay. Right? That's okay. Wait for her to look at you. Now toss another one. Do you see what her head did? What was that? Alert. <laughs> Are you throw something for me? <laughs> Do another one. Watch her head again. Watch this. <laughs> See how her body language changed? She's got circle tail going on now. Now, do you think that she still has a lot of adrenaline in her system? Yeah. Yes. yes. Do you know how long it takes for adrenaline to flood out of the system after the dog had a really huge event? Half an hour. Three days. Three days. Yeah. Then where it's all the way down to base level. Does that mean the dog can't, you know, be okay? Yeah, the dog can be okay, but. It's not going to be absolutely down to base until it's finished. So okay. here's one more, and I think we have another dog behind her. How old do you think she is? Oh, fail. Go ahead and point it out for her. We can tap on the floor. <coughs> and even with all the coughing, she's with her tail now. It's curled. It's below her back. She actually knows that her foster's there saying, hi. Hi. So, hello. <laughs> so she's she's from what organization? Lucky Dog. Lucky Dog, yay. Okay, so Lucky Dog, there are a lot of people here from Lucky Dog. Um, I mean in Maryland. And how old is she? Two or three years old. Two or three? Cool. And is she on the Lucky Dog website? She is. She's yeah. on the website. So if anyone's looking for a good family dog. Awesome. That's a good choice. Fantastic. Do you remember? I'm going to just have you walk away. Let's see if she notices. No, not even one. Oh. <laughs> Just follow him into the kitchen, it's dead end. <laughs> and there's a dog there. And there's a dog there, although she was okay with the other dog in the hallway. And, and she immediately, you know, was fine with that. Some dogs will actually chase you, you know, let's say, and stay out, right? But 
She didn't mind at all. Fantastic. Well, thank you for bringing her. Tell everybody her name again because they forgot. This is Betsy. Betsy. Right, so if you're looking for an adorable dog, get to along with other dogs. But just need a little bit of work. <laughs> oh my God, she is so happy. Now. Thank you so much. And I don't. Do you know who's behind you? Is that Matthew? Matthew. Yay. Okay. Uh, Wendell. Wendell. Okay. And that's not his dog. Is that the dog for Washington? It's his foster. Okay. Thank you for coming out on such a rainy day. Your foster's rule. Yes. Is it possible to get the hand out of your downtown? Yes. Um, I am so sorry. I forgot about those. Oh, scared puppy. I'm gonna. Um, can anybody move these to the table over there? So I can see all of you in the back. The little cards are the whole thing that you were learning, and then the dog Friday one All right, Matthew. This is Wendell, right? Wendell. Oh, she knows her name. <laughs> And we're going to see, does anybody want to try with Wendell? Oh, fabulous. Come on up. Thank you. Well, we're going to watch. You're going to, of course, try to stick to the chairs here. Or you can come this way, too, but I think you're all right. How old is he? About two. Two? Yeah. Full grown. Fantastic. And Matt, can you do me a favor and hold the leash more towards um, you so she has more leash to, to use? There you go. And then, yeah, you can just hold it really tight so she can explore. Go ahead and say something about to him. Hello, Wendy. <laughs> there are landlines on the table. <laughs> okay, do you see your behavior change? Do you see his behavior change? Just a little bit, right? The mouth closed. Like I said, it's a moment in time. Right? <laughs> Really okay. Your treats, though. Yeah, really wants those treats. They are pretty awesome treats, right? I'll go ahead and and say something again, and just kind of take one step. And see. Oh, just got distracted. Yeah. But remember, avoidance, turning the head, can actually be part of it as well, right? So it might be like go away. Do me a favor. Go ahead and see. Oh, now we have some sniffing going on. Usually when you have sniffing like that, um, the dogs calm down a little bit. So using their nose. <laughs> it's okay if he gets the whole bag. It's just I'll feel sorry for your uh, diarrhea issue later. <laughs> and I have treats right over there. I'm going to see if you didn't notice if you even get those treats. I, I have a feeling this dog's slightly treat motivated. <laughs> And we're going to try, oh, look at that. Yeah. What sort of wide line is that? He's got that cute in his ears. All right, let's see. Uh-oh. <laughs> You'll just have to get him back out of the nose zone, make kissy noises or something. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can. You can like, could you get a treat? Sure. All right, you can really crawl. That's OK. There you go. Wow. If you want a treat motivated dog, Window, Wendell is your dog. Now, Wendell was in the, the vestibule, the little area there with Betsy, and had no problems. Yeah, so well, they know each other. Oh, okay. So, how is he with other dogs? He is a uh, great off leash. Okay. Not so good off leash. Good on. Okay, cool. So, dog park, he has no problems. Now, what is he doing? Do you see right before she threw the treat? What was that? That was a lure. Yeah. Yeah. You have one more or you, you're out? Yeah. You're out. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, did you bring your, your other dog? Yes. Would you like to bring him? Do we have anybody else out there? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Fabulous. Because Matt, this is your own dog, right? No, yeah, this is a false. No, no. The next dog. Oh, yes. Could yes, you yes. please? I love it. And then I know some of you, you know, you have to go. Thank you for coming. Um, if you want to see it, his own dog, you're going to see a little bit of contrast here. Thank you so much. That was really good. <laughs> Lovely dog. Now he is he is from Lucky Dog as well, I believe. And also up for adoption. I, I always like showcasing dogs up for adoption. And you were talking about meeting on leash. Yes. But that was not. I, I would say meeting on doing that. I mean, I walk the dog in the neighborhood and so they're always across the street. They see the other dog. What do you you know, is there any So I once had Robin Bennett 
tell me to, you know who she is, this is pretty cool. Um, she always said, oh, I'm sorry, my dog will throw up on you or pee on you. That usually makes people go away. Unfortunately, a lot of people want to test that. So <laughs> what I tell them is I say, I'm so sorry my dog is in training. And you just leave it at that. Just keep repeating it as if they didn't hear you the first time. Don't make other excuses. Don't say your dog is nervous because then you have liability issues, right? Even if your dog isn't nervous, just say, I'm sorry my dog's in training. And the reason that you do that is they put in their head, what, what does that make you think? If somebody says, I'm sorry my dog is in training. Service dog. Service dog. Yeah, you didn't say that. That was a thought that they put in their own head, isn't it? If you think that it's a service dog, what are you going to do? Be respectful like you should have been in the first place. Right? Can I pet your kid on the head? <laughs> Can I give your kid a wet willy? Can I get in his face? No. You know, people don't do that. But we do that to dogs. So that's the excuse I always use. And here's the reason I don't like dogs meeting on leash. Forget about safety concern. Let's just talk about what are we teaching the dogs? Approach head on. <laughs> Approach head on, that's scary. But what what are we You're teaching them? Pulling at them so that they're something that there's tension and this is not safe. Oh, absolutely. Let's get rid of safety. Let's just go with basic obedience dog training. What are we teaching the dog? To pull. To pull and not listen. Not listen when there's another dog around. What else? When see other dog get to go say hi to all other dogs. Why won't you let me go say hi to that dog, mom? And I see this a lot with dogs that are taken to daycares and things like that. Is because you're in the lobby, right? The dog's like so excited to be there. And oh, there's dogs, there's dogs, there's dogs. And what happens? They immediately get left into a, let into a room with a bunch of other dogs. So now when they see other dogs, they think it's playtime. And that's when you need soldier, uh, shoulder surgery later on because your dog believes when I see dog, I play dog. And what they need to learn is when you have the leash on, it's classroom time. And when the leash is off, it's playtime. Now you can have a very obvious change in context for your dog. But when my dogs are on leash, they never get to meet another dog. Now, can you get to a point where your dog learns that and then they have enough self-control that when they see another dog, they say, oh, we're not gonna meet. But the vending machine over here that's always holding my leash is probably gonna give me treats if I sit and I'm good and I look at her. Now you have a dog who automatically does that. And you have a dog that acts like a service dog. So when you come at another dog, they're going like this. Hey, you got something for me? You got something for me? And then you stop, the dog automatically sits, looks at you, and just assumes. But now you have a lovely interaction with the other person. And then maybe can you let the dog sniff? Well, if you really know the other person. Oh. Here's his math tip. What, what's his name? Ben. What is it? Batman. Batman. Oh my gosh, that's right. No, 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 no. So, Matt is a geek. Apparently. What do you think about this dog? Funny language. Big goofball. Big goofball. Knows about the treat. I'm so sorry for leaving the treat. Would you say hello to this dog? I still feel a little intimidated. Intimidated, <laughs> right? I'm so glad you brought this dog. Because if, if I, what if I'm not sure? I'm not going to put anybody else to it. So sorry, guys. But if Batman, cool person here. Oh my God! Somebody's barking. That's scary, right? Turn pooch just happened. That's okay. Batman. Hey, buddy. Okay, I, so I did he. What did he do then? Why did he lift this there? Anticipation. Maybe anticipation? He doesn't know I have traits. At least I don't think so. He hit me under the leash. He was like, oh, wait. What if, yeah. Well, he, Dad's standing still. Like, why does Dad ever do that? I'm standing still in front of an audience. It's like, oh, he laughed, so that he never stand still. Look at his body language. I'm throwing traits. What does that tell you about him? It's a big goofball! Right? And go, hey, buddy. Right? Look at the body. Look at his body. Yeah. Play now. Right? Can I come up and say hi to him? Yes. And I'm going to put my hands down. Yes, I have treats in my hands. Oops. But when you approach a dog, 
You let them always approach you. Don't reach towards them, just stand like a tree. If they say hi, Batman, everybody. Oh, <laughs> yep, there I go with the massive butt check. Yeah, he really wants to go up and meet every one of you. Yes. So he was so kind to to bring a, a dog here that is just a big goofball, and you can see the difference. Isn't that great? Thank you so much for bringing right. not up for adoption. <laughs> I have a feeling Matt will go to festivals with you yeah. over this, this awesome dog. But I look at the breed. Everybody's like, stir it up, stir it up. Oh, <laughs> 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 I love questions. Yeah, I noticed when you first would come in, though, um, that he did some shake-offs. Yes. And I always reinforce that with my dogs because it's almost like I've heard it's like what you said. Yes. And I used to think that you hear that discussing thing, but is that one of the things that kind of makes you feel a little bit more about What that tells me is whatever happened previous to that, even if it was previously just like two seconds before that, that something happened that got his adrenaline up, it could have been good or bad, where he now has to go, right? Just kind of a quick. <clears throat> So it could have been like, oh, it's exciting, we're going indoors, hey, what's going to happen? <clears throat> or it could be like, oh my gosh, that was a really scary situation, I've got to shake that off. We don't know, it's all based on content. But yes, shaking off is nice. It's a nice, right, very, very nice. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you Come so on, much. <laughs> and right. thank you all so much for coming. Do you have any, any announcements? No. No. Okay. If you want to hand out tickets now while we're there, and you want to buy anything, we have a